Every so often in 2024, I'm going to take advantage of my Chatter That Matters platform and just riff on something that I feel matters to me and to you. And I want to launch this series by talking about the state of democracy. I mean, Winston Churchill's famous for saying many forms of government have been tried and will be tried in this world of sin and woe. No one pretends that democracy is perfect or all wise. Indeed, it's been said that democracy is the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. See, I'm not feeling great about our democracy. I don't understand how we can elect a party based on a platform, and then once they're in office, they can make completely different moves on the chessboard. And moves that often cost us billions in precious tax dollars, and even worse, borrowed money on the backs of future generations. See, I said, what's a friend of mine? He's a member of a golf club. And the board wanted to do a major makeover of the course, spend $15 million. And to make their case to members, they had to do a detailed plan. They had to present what they wanted to do, their rationale, how much it would cost, and how much it would cost to each member. And then they held a referendum, and the members voted it down. Shouldn't we be asking the same of our democracy? That if a party in power decides to make a new move, let's say increase immigration or introduce new social programs that weren't part of their election platform, spend money abroad versus spending money internally, shouldn't they have to make their case and then ask the voters for permission? I mean, hear me out for a sec. Let's take immigration. Let's say that our government decides that once they're elected, they want to triple our immigration levels. And they use this fact that we're an aging population and we need people. Well, that makes a sound argument, but I want a case. I want that government first and foremost to outline what is their plan for our new economy? What are they seeing in terms of growth? And what kind of talent will be required to help us get there? Second thing is, I want to understand, before just saying that, well, there's our talent gap. How much talent do we have now in Canada whose jobs are going to be eradicated because of AI and technology in the coming decade? Because I think those people deserve the first shot at new jobs. They deserve to have our dollars go to retraining them. Third thing I want to understand is if we're bringing all these people in, what's their process for vetting it? I want them to explain how they're going to invite people in who share our values, who believe in our freedoms and democracy, versus once they're here, work to tear them apart. And the final thing I want to hear is the onboarding process. Is I'm embarrassed when we bring immigrants in that have got degrees and a decade of experience, and they end up driving an Uber. So I want to know our onboarding process so people can hit the ground with purpose, with passion. If they want to come and chase their dream in Canada, how do we ensure that they can do that? I mean, the same holds true, for example, of dramatically increasing the size of government. See, if if a government's in power and suddenly decides that we're going to put all this new people on the payroll, I want them to make a case for it. I want them to say, here's why we're doing it. Here's the value it's going to bring Canadian citizens. And here's the cost. And I'm not just talking about salaries. I'm talking about overhead and future pensions. I mean, well-run families and organizations all work with a series of check and balances, spending within our means. Shouldn't government? It's Tony Chapman. It's Chatter That Matters. Let's chat soon. Chat soon.